Hang on, lad. All right, Donnie, come on. I've got you. Come on, round the other side. We can't stand about in this hut. Soon have you in the dry act. Right, here we go. Hang on. Oh, here we go. Ah, that's it. There you are. Whoa. Oh. What happened then, love? Some bloke, eh? Was it? Hmm. Come on, you can tell me. Back there, he give you a lift or something, did he? Shouldn't do it, you know, love. Not right out here in the wilds. I'm cold. I'm not surprised. Look at that dress you're wearing, eh? What is it you got on? Looks like a bloody bit of sacking or something. You been to some fancy dress ball? Who did that to you, love? He deserves a swing for that, whoever he was. Don't you worry. He won't get away with it. I'm going to drive you to London. Don't you worry. You're going straight to the law. Some of these blokes, it makes you wonder how their minds work. Gives you the creeps. Why don't you take it easy, love? You're all right with me. Why not try and have a sleep, eh? Over here. What is it? What are they doing? 
We're about to unveil your lovey. Come on, let's have a look. I think it's in your honour, darling. The action still of the year. Come on, let's see what they've Joe got it from the Evening Standard Press office. Terribly good. I love that expression there. <laughs> right, <isn't it? laughs> right, look at these tall deers over here. Isn't that you behind the car? Yeah, it's amazing, actually. We just finished the session before they arrested us. What happened? Uh, didn't you read about it? It was in all the papers. And not one of them mentioned the product. Mm, they're getting smart. Right. Uh, sorry, they uh, fined us. Me and Anne-Marie, ten pounds each. What <laughs> for? Uh, behaviour likely to cause a breach of the peace. <laughs> what a show, right? Well, the clients like the pictures, though, Cav, did I tell you? Yeah, marvellous, but she was great. She really looked fantastic. <laughs> Where, where's she gone? I don't know. And Marie, come here, have a drink. Your flatmate's drinking under the table. Leave her alone, Ted. I think she's a bit embarrassed. What about? Not this, surely. Well, she's a bit touchy about her parents finding out. And I think we ought to stop teasing her as well. I don't blame her. I'm sorry? Oh, <laughs> it's all right to say I'm It all seems a bit childish to me. And rather tasteless. Though I wouldn't say that to anyone else. May I get your drink? No, thank you. I have enough. Come sit down. Tell me who you are. Ted? Yeah? Who's that? Who's what, my love? I'm getting a bit bleary-eyed. A dish chatting up Henry. <laughs> God knows. Something Joe picked up. What? Apparently, he walked into the office just before it closed and offered our lovely lady some idea for a feature. She took some sort of fancy to him and invited him to stay. Not like her, is it? Mm, he must have a fatal charm. <laughs> or something. Mm. Yes, well, we'd better find you a little friend of your own, my darling. Come and meet some of my eligible fellow slaves, if we can sober them up. Gentlemen, let me introduce you to the lovely Julia King. It's time to meet you. All right, my love. There's an article here on 12th century ceramics and a poem of Ezra Pound sandwiched between a huge negress in chains and Andy Warhol on the loo. What are you reading? Escort. Ted thrust it into my hot little hands when I left the party last night. Said I ought to gen up on modern men's tastes. I don't think they know about the men's tastes. Ah, well, that's a secret, you see. They don't. They just tell them what they think they ought to have a taste for. And the poor suckers believe them. Talking of escorts, when's yours arriving? Hmm, I'm to meet him. I must hurry. Yeah. Is that the one that chatted you up at the party? Chatted me up? Uh, yes. He's a fast worker. Um, <laughs> he is uh, charming. He is different. You know. I see. May I borrow your mirror? Mine has a broken bow. Go ahead. Hey, it's still wet. Am I? He's a writer, isn't he? Is he? Didn't he say? He said so little. We talked about me. What's his name? Mark. Uh, Mark Desar. And when am I going to meet him? Julia, you have Tony. <laughs> yes, I have Tony. And you better remember to bring the wine. He will not take you out tonight. We thought we'd eat in for a change. I bought some pate and a chicken. But uh, you should get him to take you out somewhere nice to eat. What, with the whole place to ourselves for once? Oh, I see. Then <laughs> 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 one day, Madame asked me to come down and show her mother to her client. When the house many girls had gone on, I think I looked nice in the dress, and Madame let me model a little. Then I got to Balmain for a few months, and I met Julia, who said I should go to work for a boss who is an agent in London. So I got to London, where I do much uh, photographic work, and uh, that is my life. Why are you so nervous? Nervous? I? What do you mean? Something in your voice, your eyes. I think you're afraid of me. <laughs> oh, but no. I'm a little uh, excited, that is all. Why should I be afraid? Why not? You're out alone with a man who you don't know. And we all fear the unknown. It's unnatural. But I do know you. And I like you. 
Why, even at the party, you are the only one who really understands. This is true, Mark. Let me show you something. Come on. A little experiment, something to prove what I say. You'll find it interesting. All you have to do is close your eyes. Oh. No, come on, close your eyes. <laughs> but you must promise to keep them closed all the time. All right? Okay. Are they closed? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good. Now I want you to imagine something. Can you remember the way the table is laid out? Do you remember the knives at the side of the plates? The steak knives? The ones with the serrated edges? Do you know serrated? A dozen razor sharp little notches on each blade. What sharpness? They go through steak just like that. Now I'm picking one up. And I'm looking at it. I don't even touch it with my finger. Because the slightest pressure would make a cut. Now I'm going to bring the knife closer to you. I'm reaching out across the table. And I'm holding the knife very close to your face. The blade has the finest, thinnest cutting edge imaginable. It's almost touching your face. If you were to move your face just one eighth of an inch, it would slice through your cheek, just like that. <laughs> <laughs> Only an ice cube. But I felt, uh, I felt... What? It's the blood. <laughs> you thought I would cut your face. But anybody would mind. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done it. It's only a joke. Will you forgive me? I was so frightened. <laughs> We're sending it to you. Where did these go? In that drawer there. Look, it's all those bloody saucepans. Yeah, let's leave it. Certainly not. Oh, come on, let's leave it. Why? Because I want to... Kick it to... back to my wife. Oh, that was nasty. I didn't mean it. I'm sorry. Look, let's get on with it before Froggy gets home. She won't be back yet. She's got a great big yearning for that writer. Who's he? Oh, some dishy, dark-eyed number she mm. met at the escort party. Hey, what's this? What's what? Oh, it's a fuse. Tony. Look, don't ask me to fix it. I'm useless with my hands. Oh, you're kidding. <laughs> You'll have to pay for that. But not for this. <laughs> What for? The kiss or the dinner? Both. Everything. It has been so wonderful. I've enjoyed it so much. What an unusual ring. Let me see, what does it say? M-E-D. Mark E. Design. Mark E. Design. What's the matter? Oh, it just sounds a little like something else. Mark E. Design. The Mark E. Design, you know. <laughs> Who is he? <laughs> Nobody. You coming in? Won't we disturb your flatmate? No. She has her room and I have mine. No, not tonight. I must do some writing. But will I see you again? This weekend, if you're free. Oh, <laughs> yes, please. I'd like to take you to visit my parents. Well, to meet my mother. Oh, Marky, you are so funny and so special. I thought you didn't like me. I'm sorry. No, it is nice. I would like to meet your mother, but uh, perhaps she wouldn't like me. You're French. She likes the French? <laughs> then we shall be very happy. We could drive down on Friday. It is a long way, no? Quite. Let's stay then. It's a dead mark in the sand. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, where are you off to? Oh, sure, yeah. The photographer. He made me work an extra hour and I'm late. Oh, he's here and I'm not ready. Who's here? Where are you going? I told you. I'm going away for the weekend. Oh, yes, to meet somebody's mom. 
Was that the Raven writer, the caramel model or the phony producer? Yes, yes. Oh, well, that answers my question. Did you get her the present? No, I didn't have time, but we will stop to buy something on the way. Goodbye, Julia. I must hurry. Goodbye. Have a nice time. Beautiful. Is it a long way to your mother's? Mark. Where does she live? Mark. Mark. Drive a little more slowly, please. Wait here. You're late. I, uh... Oh, 
and leave them on the table. All of them. And your shoes. seems to be, doesn't it? You are both deaf and insolent. Who are you? What is this place? What is Monsieur Desire? There are two rules very easily learnt on entering this institution. Institution? Shut up! One is that instructions are given to be obeyed. The other is that each officer is addressed as madam. I... I should not be here. I should not be here... what? I don't understand. I don't understand. You are not in this room to understand. You are in this room to be bathed and checked for vermin before putting on your uniform. Now, get your clothes off. I will not. This is not where I should be. I will go to find Monsieur Desart. He is he... <laughs> no. no. Now, then, we will continue the customary reception routine. Since you are not willing to undress yourself, you will have to be stripped. Bates. No, please. Let me go. I will do it. Please, tell Silence. me. Silence. Now, undress behind the screen. We haven't got all night. When you're finished, report here. Put your clothes on the table. Do as you're told. One trouser suit, suede, with cap and belt to match. One pair of panties, black. One blouse, black. And one pair of shoes. No, no. And those. What? Madame? The watch and the ring. And the cross. Sign at the bottom. Thank you, bitch. In the... shower. Wash yourself properly. All over. It's cold. Wash yourself or someone will do it for you. I think it's your design. He played some tricks on me, yes? You are detained at Her Majesty's pleasure. But what does this mean, please? I have done nothing wrong.
Your name is Amory de Bernay, age 19, born in Avignon, France, but resident in London. Your occupation is modeling. Yes, but I... You are here to serve sentence, according to the proper moral and disciplinary standards, for conviction of a serious charge for exposing yourself unclothed, without shame, for monetary gain to a photographer in a public place on the 11th day of April last for which outrage against public decency, a corrupt and permissive London court fined you 10 pounds and discharged you. Then I'm free. Why am I here? Where is Mom? Please, I want to see him. Who are you? Speak on your spoken to. Anne-Marie de Verne. Anne-Marie de Verne. Uh, de Verne. Uh, when I came into court, you were asking, if I am not mistaken, why you were in the dock. I propose to enlighten you. This court, my dear young lady, exists outside the statutory laws of this land. It is a private court. Uh, we are constituted here by private charter within the walls of this fine historic building that was once a county jail to pass what we regard as proper sentence on depraved females of every category with whom the effete and misguided courts of Great Britain today have been too lenient. The immorality yes. and filth are rife in this land again. today and must not be tolerated. We do not countenance here reformers, prison welfare visitors, or chaplains. We do not provide comfortable rooms with chintz curtains and televisions. This young woman is a real prison, a proper... proper... House of correction. A proper house of correction. <clears throat> During your stay, uh, during your stay here, uh, the length of which will be determined by your conduct, any attempt to escape, any disturbance you may create, any refusal to obey the orders of Mrs. Wakehurst, the governess who sits here with me, nor the members of the staff, will meet with prompt, persuasive and painful punishment. We trust that when the time comes for you to leave, you will be a more fit person to take your place in society. And may God bless you. No. No. Move, oh, Prisoner Walker. No, no. Bates, remain here with me. Your naked body in public, you know, you get a thrill out of it. <laughs> oh, you know, I think you pretend to be telling me last year about you take any opportunity of having a man leer at you, wouldn't you? Well, I'd like not, I. <laughs> you think I wouldn't guess that? I can read you like a book. That's your bunk. Get up! will lie on it until otherwise directed. We're the only people who can help you, Devani. There's nobody to flaunt yourself at here. Nobody to tease. I'm going to make you ashamed of your body, Devani. I'm going to see to that personally. Talking is at all times strictly forbidden. Except when answering a prison officer. I'm in here. Shh. She has gone. Please tell me why. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yes, that's all right, Bates. There are too many vague suspicions creeping into your reports. There's no smoke without fire. It's quite probable that the Vaughan girl is smuggling food into her cell. Bring me evidence tomorrow. Yes, madam. Ah, uh, Walker. Next week I intend to relieve Justice Bailey of some of his responsibilities. Seems a little point in going on and reporting the arrival of new prisoners to him. He remembers nothing. The whole procedure is a waste of time. In future, you will bring the details to me alone. Is that clear? Yes, madam. Good. Is everything under control? Yes, madam, I think so. Think so? Duvernay could be a problem, madam. She will not be a problem, Walker. She will not. I do not want a repetition of what happened before. If there are problems, Walker and you, Bates, I shall want to know the reason why. Yes, madam. madam. Good. Oh, Walker, I want Bates here with me tomorrow afternoon. We haven't finished the early inventory. You go into town, get the provisions, and take on her other duties. Yes, madam. Good night. Good, Good night, night, madam. madam. Margaret? Yes? Uh, would you like a drink, my dear? I'll do it. I've told Walker and Bates that I shall be handling the new admissions in future. Make things easier for you. I find it very difficult to tell the King from the Queen. They feel exactly alike. I dare say one is taller than the other. Do you hear me, Desmond? Yes, my dear. What was the name of the girl I sentenced today? Oh, you've been told three times already. She reminded me of the Hanson girl, Claudine Hanson. She was French, too. That was a long time ago. A long time? Oh, no. Five years? Oh, it's nearly 30, Desmond. 30 years? It couldn't have been. I can remember it distinctly. It was 1946. You were a High Court judge and I was in charge of Cosmo Grange, wasn't I? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Oh, dear, is it that long ago? It seems so clear. I can remember your very words on the telephone. Desmond, you've got to help me. It's all gone wrong. They're blaming me for the girl's suicide. Eh, that's what you said. Oh, yes, you can remember that, can't you? You can remember things that happened 30 years ago, but you can't remember the things that matter. You can't remember that you failed to get me reinstated. I was doing my duty. The stupid French girl was unstable. But you can't remember that. Or the days of the week, or the names of prisoners you met five minutes ago. What did you do that for, Margaret? I never remember where they were. There are pieces all on the floor. Desmond, I'm convinced that no useful purpose is being served by your remaining in office at this prison. Don't speak to me like that, Margaret. While you remain here, so will I. It is no more your prison than it is mine. We started it together because we believed in the same things, and we still do. Justice for those on whom justice has not been served. But justice must be seen to be done, Desmond. You pitiless woman! Do you think I'm blind from choice? Do you think that for one minute in 25 years I've become reconciled to this miserable darkness? You have no feelings, no idea of how I suffer. Oh, no more than I do, I'm sure. At least I'm spared the anguish of gazing at your poor, tormented face. And I suspended, pluck them out, Desmond. Margaret? Pluck them out, I say! I'm oh, sorry. Madam, I thought you were about to fall. I thought I'd steady you. I'm sorry. It's all right, Walker. It's quite in order. Well, don't stand there, woman. You may retire if you wish. Leave the knife, will you? Thank you.
My God, it's like a prison at home. I must go, I'm expected. I don't want to sound corny, Tony, but you can't go on like this. I know, I know it only too well. Well, don't look at me for advice. You're a very good advisor. That's what Anne Marie always says. Yeah, well, great minds. Would I be right in saying that you fancy her the merest, tiniest, littlest bit? Come off it. I've only bumped into her two or three times. Time's enough. Well, while we're talking about it, what about you and that uh, jiggler that picked you up at that party on Tuesday? Oh, no, you must be joking. I only saw him once. Across a crowded room. That's right. I don't even know his name. We keep on talking about him. Well, he was attractive. I mean, really. But I don't know. I find myself worrying about everyone she goes out with. Why? Well, she's young. She's, what, 19? And it was me that got the agency to bring her over here in the first place. I feel responsible for her. Well, don't. I'm sure she can look after herself. <laughs> this is the girl, madam. She steals food from the tables and takes it to herself. Does she now? Why should she do a silly thing like that, an intelligent girl like Vaughan? Why did you do it, Vaughan? Hmm? Don't we feed you well enough? Well, come on, tell me. Don't we feed you well enough? Yes, madam. Then why do you steal? I can't help like it so. So, we don't feed you well enough, then. <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about, do you, girl? Third time, isn't it? Yes, madam. What is this noise? A fine way to start the day. I caught the Vaughan girl, madam, stealing. Selfish and despicable. By taking this bread from the communal plate to satisfy your own gluttony, you deprive others. I will not tolerate stealing. Third time offender, madam. Really? <coughs> you know what this means. No. Take her away. No! That's all in order. I'll see that it's passed on to Justice Bailey, as usual. Uh, execution is set for dawn tomorrow. See if the scaffold is prepared, and I'll inspect it with Walker after lunch. Miss Walker is on rations duty this afternoon, madam. Yes, of course. And it'll have to be you. Oh, thank you, madam. I won't do it again. I promise I'll never do it again. Anything. Please don't do anything. Sit down. <laughs> <laughs> 
about, are you? Taking it easy. You'll be in trouble if them Bible passages aren't learned by tonight. First offender, aren't you? Well, by tonight, you'll be... Oh, oh, oh. It's no good facing his mouth away. Lord our God, we thank thee for this mercy, that having graced our souls with thy food, we may make it our meat and drink to do thy gracious will. Through Jesus... Well, I have work to do, Desmond. If Walker should return before I'm back, tell her I'm with Bates. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Everything's ready, madam. You're gonna cop it this time, man, and you see. You're gonna be sorry for what you've done to me.
sign this, will you? What is it? Karen Vaughan's release. Oh, good, good. Uh, where do I? There. Uh, when is she leaving? Now. Oh, that's most encouraging news. She's learned her lesson, I'm sure. Uh, may I see her before she goes? No, she's just on her way out. <laughs> Bring the prisoner. You're a sadist. I know, I know. I'll tell her tonight. What do you think she must feel like? Look, if you want me to tell her tonight, I'll tell her tonight. It's not a case of what I want, Tony. You've got to make the decision. I made the decision. All I've got to do now is to carry it out. Right. What are you doing? Oh, sorry, I was just checking something. I was right. Anne-Marie went away on the 27th. They say nine days she's been away. Not all that again. It's strange, don't you think? She hasn't phoned, she hasn't written. I think it's funny. She's probably in the middle of a passionate affair. I mean, would you have phoned her if you'd been away with me? Of course I would. Thank you. <laughs> Come on, don't worry about it. I think I'll tell the police. Julia, you're behaving like a Jewish mother. Well, it can't do any harm, can it? We can call in on the way back to the office. Oh, please, Tony, just for me. Well, you can do it. I'm not. Come on. Madam. Oh, she wasn't found horribly mutilated in a pond then. No, dear, if you want to know, I felt a bit of an idiot. Uh -huh. well, what could I tell them? Her name's Anne-Marie de Verney and she's somewhere in England. What can they do? Mark! Mark! <laughs> what is it? Mark. Mark Desert. That's the one from the party, you know. How can I forget me? Julia. That's who she's gone away with. I can ring up the agency and get his address. Simple as that. Well, I hope he doesn't find out. It sounds suspiciously like spying to me. OK, Ted, thanks a lot. That's all right. Bye. Well, I didn't imagine it. What? You wouldn't believe this, but nobody at that party, not one of those people, knows anything about Mark Desart. Not even Ted. They was pissed. I don't like it, Tony. I really don't. Yeah, well, I mean, I've got my own problems to sort out tonight. Do you remember? Well, wish me luck, then. Good luck. David executed judgment and justice unto all his people. You've got until six o'clock tonight to learn it properly. You too, Jennings. You will be asked questions. Take them to their cells. Get along. You OK? Thanks, so. How's that, Marie? Did I hear talking?
girls intimidating me. Which girl? Which, what, why, whom? Hanson. Hanson? Oh, Duvelny. Oh, I fail to see how, my dear, if she's undergoing solitary confinement. Because she's French, that's how, and she's a troublemaker. If it hadn't been for her, I'd still be at Coswell Grange, and so would Walker and Bates. Methinks the lady doth protest too much. I see only facts. You and me and this prison and the danger it's in. The fair will destroy us, Desmond. I know it. We must get rid of her as soon as possible. Get rid of her? Get rid of her. But she has committed only one offence. We may yet be able to save her. Yes, but I didn't know. I don't know where to start. Let me try to explain, please. A long time ago, my mother was a prison governess one of the youngest in the country. There was some trouble. Reports of brutal treatment or something, and a girl died. Anyway, there was an inquiry. I don't know much about it, but somehow my father, he was head of the prison commission. He got her exonerated. But she was dismissed from the prison service. And my father left his wife and bought this place for my mother, just like people buy old railway stations or windmills to live in. They set up home together. And I was born a year later. 1947. I think I was a bit of an embarrassment to them, being illegitimate and everything. And I was sent to boarding school, and then university. I'd come to visit them every six months. But then I found they'd started getting these crazy ideas about the courts being ineffective, and the country going to rack and ruin. They said they could do something about it by lecturing young offenders on the principles of right and wrong. They'd give me names, they'd read in the newspapers, and ask me to find them and bring them down. I thought it would all be a bit of a joke with my father sitting up all night quoting the Bible at them or something. I warned them they'd get into trouble sooner or later. But it seemed to make them happy. And the months went by and nobody complained. So I went on doing it. I thought they must actually be doing some good. I never knew. Until today. This part of the building has always been locked, deserted. I thought... I found out everything. I can never forgive myself. Never. For what I've done to you. For what I've done to all of them. All of them. I... I can never forgive you, Mark. But you must go to the police now. They're insane. Don't you see that? They're not really criminals. They need treatment. They should be locked away where they can do no further harm. But I must get you away from here as soon as possible. What about the other girls? They as well, one at a time. This evening, I will unlock your door. I'll have some transport waiting for you outside. Then after you're all gone out, I'm sorry, Anne Marie. Perhaps one day you'll. No, I was going to say perhaps one day you'll understand, but that's stupid. May I kiss you? Thank you. 
It's a kiss, Evelyn. I was passing. I overdid it, didn't you, Bates? No, madam. I had my instructions. I was told to make her remember it. I've seen that look in Mrs. Wakehurst's eyes before. I don't think the girl will last the week. She may not. Look, love, it's getting very late. I don't think there's anything else we can do, quite honestly. Well, I'm not giving up. But Julia, what else is there? Mark Dazart doesn't exist. There's nobody else to phone. The NUJ have never heard of him. And he gave Joe a load of phony references. And an unobtainable phone number. That's right. He doesn't want you to find him, and you're not going to. But why go to all that trouble? Why pretend he was a writer? He was a gate crasher with a phony name, Mark Dessart. No, it's more than that. First of all, he makes sure that no one can trace him, and then he disappears with Anne-Marie. But Julia, you don't know that he was the one she went away with, do you? No, I don't know. Am I being silly? <laughs> no, just being you.
Where is your uniform, Duvernay? Uniforms must be worn at all times. Well, he's clear, madame. Bernie? She was a bad influence on you, Duvernay. We had to move her. I, I was so afraid. I thought I was going to die. I think you are dying, Duvernay. Little by little. First, we will kill your vanity. Then the rest follows of its own accord. But not yet. Not tonight. Duvernay. Where are you going with that? She's out here somewhere. Madam! It's impossible. She couldn't have done.
Say anything, darling. Uh, Can't you speak? Uh, How are you feeling, eh? Can't you say? Uh, 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 I'm taking you to the hospital. Uh, 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 Where? Feeling too good. Where is this place? Yeah, well, keep going a couple of miles. You'll pass it on the left hand side. Right, cheers. Cheers. Uh, I'm sorry to trouble you, lady. Uh, somebody told me this was a hospital. Well, I'm afraid it isn't. Oh, it isn't, eh? Well, I, I wonder, could I use your telephone? Only I found a girl on the road. She's in a pretty bad way. Oh. Oh. Uh, this is a private clinic, but uh, it looks very serious indeed. I think you'd better bring her inside. Sure. Thanks a lot. Poor child. Did she... Did she tell you what had happened to her? No, I couldn't get any sense out of her. I mean, she was babbling, delirious, you know, but she never said a word. That's why I was getting worried. Yes, I'm sure you were. Uh, are you all right? Yes, you know, I'm good. Right, this way. Yours. Yeah, careful. Her back's red raw. Walker? A girl, madam. She was found. Uh, where? About five or six miles down the road. This gentleman found her. He has no idea what could have happened to her. She must be beaten up by some pervert. Good. Gracious, how lucky you were to find us. Well, um, you must, um, oh, we must prepare a bed for her immediately. Yeah. She, she's not really bad, is she? I think she'll be all right. 
thanks to you. We'll put her in Ward 3. Will you see to that at once, please? And then we'll phone the police. Yes, madam. Well, I expect we've held you up long enough, haven't we? Oh, no, 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 no. That's all right with me. I just want to make sure she's OK. She'll be all right, Mr. Um... Kind. Kind? Oh, kind in name and nature. Well, don't worry, Mr. Kind. Just leave your address with one of my nurses. I'm sure the girl will want to contact you when she's better. Oh, well, please forgive me for not coming to the door. I must go and prepare a bed for her. A good night's sleep will make all the difference. Yeah. Okay, okay. Cheers. Night. I'll uh, hear from you then. Yes. Yeah. Funny how places. It's old. Yeah. Cheers then. Goodbye. You thought you could outwit me, didn't you? I suppose it was Claudine Hansen who taught you to creep up behind people and attack them, was it? Well, you burned your boats this time, hasn't she, Walker? She's beyond redemption, madam. Quite beyond, quite beyond. Prepare the death cell. She'll be executed tomorrow. Two in the first half and another five minutes from time. Go on. That's funny. Oh, it's funny. That is. I know that bird. Yeah, that's her face all right, that is. Or is it? Ha <laughs> ha. No, it can't be. What's the matter with you? I thought I'd recognise the girl on the ever, that's all. What, your missus, is it? Making a bit on the side. <laughs> Jack! <laughs> Tea, sausage and chips. Right. I think old Jack's fancying a bit of the extramaritals. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you look. Let's have a bit of room. Oh, 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 Watch it. Oh, get it cross. That's all right. Only a newspaper. It's gone all over your friend. Uh, let's have another look, can I? Yeah, help yourself. Do you really know her? I picked her up, this girl, last night in a pissing rain. Yeah? She'd been beaten up. Now, I drove her to a hospital, a clinic, something like that, a couple of miles outside of Penlons. I left her there to be taken care of. Yeah, well. Well, unless I'm going blind or soft in the head or something, this girl in the habit is her. Go on. Oh, I'm bloody certain of it. Where are you going? I've got to find this paper and get the name off them. Why? Well, it stands to reason, doesn't it? I mean, this kid was in a bad way last night. She was babbling, you know. She was only half-conscious. Well, supposing they can't identify her? Find out her name, next of kin, that sort of thing. Well, I reckon the paper I know who she is. Get in touch with the people and tell them that she's in dock. It's not your problem, Jack. Oh, no. You just can't leave it, can you? Marvelous. Did I get you up then? Yeah? No, it's not that. Well, you wouldn't believe this, but Anne Marie's been found in Penn Lawrence. She's had some kind of accident, but she's okay. A lorry driver picked her up and took her to a private clinic. How? Well, he saw her picture in the paper, phoned the paper, and the paper phoned mainly at the agency. Where? I don't know. I tried to phone, but couldn't find the number. He didn't know the name of the place. I was just on my way to see her. There's a train leaving in about half an hour. I'll be back tonight. 
Look, come round after work. I'll leave the key under the mat. I'll see you later, Tony, OK? Bye. Bye. direction the clinic's in, please. The what? Apparently there's a private clinic around here. A big old building, about a mile from the centre of town. Well, there's a place up there. High wall around it. Yes, that's it. I don't think it's a clinic, though, is it? I think so. Thanks a lot. Always thought it was the old jail. Who do you want? I believe a girl named Anne Marie Verney was brought here yesterday. I'm a friend of hers. I wondered if I could see her. There's nobody of that name here. This is a clinic. I was told it was. Wait there, would you? Since you ask so nicely. I'm afraid I've caused you rather a lot of trouble. I'm not even sure if I'm in the right place. I couldn't ascertain from your colleague whether this was a clinic. It is, yes, but private patients only. Well, I think the lorry driver I spoke to was quite sure that he did bring Anne-Marie here last night. Last night? Oh, uh, what does your friend look like? Young, long fair hair, about five foot, pretty. Oh, but surely that was... Uh, what was her name? Phillips. The Phillips girl. Now, I wasn't here myself last night, but I think a girl was admitted. Nurse uh, Johnson dealt with it. Ah, uh, yes, here it is, Rosemary Phillips. Mm, usual thing, hitchhiking, attacked on the road. But she wasn't hurt badly. Yes, that was the girl I saw this morning. Her parents came to collect her. She didn't have a French accent? Oh, no, no, quite obvious to have a girl. Yes, well, it seems as though I've come all this way for nothing. Not too far, I hope. Yes, London. Oh, how maddening. May we give you a lift to the station? No, it's quite right. I'm very grateful for your help. Not at all. I'm sorry you had such a long journey. Never mind. Oh, there is just one thing. Do you think I could bring my boyfriend? I might be able to persuade him to pick me up at Paddington. Well, I don't think the phone Oh, I'll pay, of course. It's long distance. I nearly forgot. Why not? No reply. Hello? Oh, Julia. Yes, I just got in. Dead end. Yes, I thought it was too good to be true. Still, I'm coming back now. Be an angel and... Mark! Trouble, 
Tony. Terrible trouble. Help me, the critic! Julia? Julia! Hello? You have abused your privilege. Where's Anne-Marie? If you've got her, I want to see her. Do you now? Well, then, you shall. You want to see her, or don't you? Anne-Marie? <gasps> Cut her down! Cut her down! Why, oh, help us. She's been dead for some hours. How did it happen? Oh, really, my dear. What's been happening here? What made her do it? Young woman, you appear to be fully aware of your surroundings. This is a prison. Those locked in it are criminals. De Fanny did not commit suicide. She was justly executed for breaking the law. You mean you've... you killed her? I do not propose to enter into a discussion of that kind. You murdered her! Quiet! I'm going for the police! You'll do nothing of the kind! challenge my authority to overthrow me as governess of this institution, you must be insane. You tried immediately to conspiracy. Walk a locker up and prepare the courtroom. Conspiracy. Conspiracy. Can't be only one penalty. Let me go! Damn you! Get your hands off me! You misunderstand, King. We want nothing from you except to keep your mouth shut. is wrong, Margaret. Get on with it or I'll do it myself. I'll do it myself, do you hear me? Julia King, you are charged with conspiring to pervert the course of justice. How do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? That woman is a murderess! She killed Anne-Marie de Bernay in cold blood! Touch her up, Walker. <gasps> what did she say? Pass sentence, Desmond. She's a dangerous psychopath and must be hanged immediately. Pass sentence. Excuse me, is there a clinic round here, a private clinic, something like that? Not that I know of, no. OK, thanks. Excuse me, is there a clinic round here, a hospital, something like no. that? No, uh, no. Prisoner at the bar, have you anything to say before I pass sentence? This is a travesty, a travesty of justice. All right. Let us say one thing, one thing only. I'll play your game. I want to see my lawyer. Denied. That's illegal and you know it. I won't be trying that. Demma, Demma. Julia King. You have been convicted of conspiring to pervert the course of justice. Get her. Get her back. The verdict of this court is that you be taken from here to a place of execution where you will be hanged by the neck until you are dead. And may the Lord have... Mercy on you, so. You won't get rid of me a second time. Oh, no. I'll see to that. I was told there's a clinic in this area. Do you know where it could be? Clinic? What? You mean hospital-like? Yes, anything like that, yes. Oh, I don't think so, Henry. Hmm? No hospital round here, is there? As far as I know, there might be, though. 
What about that woman that comes in here every week? She's got a nurse's uniform, hasn't she? What woman? You know, the one who gets a big order every Saturday. Well, oh, Lord. What, what did you say? What did you say? Well, she's always wears a sort of grey tunic, but I shouldn't have thought... Where did she come from? Well, don't likely, no. She, she drives in from that direction, doesn't she? Uh, I always thought she might come from that big old place, you know, on the, on the right, going yes, off. Yes, that's right. <laughs> that's only a guess, though. Margaret! saw the rot. The disease at Coswell Grange, wasn't I? But they wouldn't listen, though. And they didn't see it. Girls. Filthy, depraved animals. Treating it like a holiday hotel. And then running out to commit more crime. Pollute society. <laughs> and laughing at me. All of them. And Hanson. She laughed. But I made the punishment fit the crime. Taught the animal to obey. <laughs> Suicide, they said. They didn't know, though, did they? Do you hear that, Hanson? I will not be dismissed. Are you laughing at me now, Hanson? I'm going to stop you laughing when I find you.
didn't do it. Mommy didn't do it. Mommy wouldn't do a thing like that. She loves you. Please get up. Nothing's happened. Shh. Getting out. Oh, where is she, Bates? Bring her to me. I must go, madam. Mind if I ask you ladies a couple of questions? Margaret? Margaret? Oh, dear Lord. If there be a controversy between men and they come to judgment that the judges may judge them, then they shall justify the righteous and condemn the wicked. And it shall be, if the wicked man be worthy to be beaten, that the judge shall cause him to lie down and to be beaten before his face according to his fault by a certain number. Forty stripes he may give him and not exceed lest if he should exceed and beat him above these with many stripes, then thy brother should seem vile unto thee.